Let's say that we wanted to use Python and Turtle Graphics to draw a shape that looks like this, essentially a little clock face. So what we want to do, open up PyScripter, and the very first line in our code, we're going to type in import turtle. And what that's going to do is Python's going to look for a file called turtle.py, and it's going to look first in the current folder. If it can't find it there, then it's going to look in its default library of modules, which you don't have to worry about where that is, but what it does mean is you shouldn't save your file as turtle.py, or that uh, import turtle uh, line right there is not going to do what you want. Now, after we've imported it, we're going to create a window. So I'm going to say the window equals turtle, which is the file that we just imported, dot capital S screen. And that's a function, so I need brackets at the end of it like that. And then really important that I put this line in, I also need to call at the very end of my code the, the window dot main loop. And that's also a function, so brackets at the end of main loop. So if I give that a run, What's going to happen is that Python is going to pop open this new window, and it's just going to be a blank window that says Python Turtle Graphics. And because I put the window.main loop, it means it's running an infinite loop so that I can close it and everything works. If you forget that, uh, the window.main loop here, or whatever you've called your screen.main loop, then your, uh, your PyScripter is going to turn into a spinning wheel of death. It's going to get all gray, and you'll have to uh, force quit it. So make sure you include that line. Now, after we've set the window to, to open up, we can also adjust other values in the window. So I could say something like the window.bg color and pass in, say, light green. And if I do that, it's going to pop open, and we have now a window with a green background. Now, I didn't just magically know that that was a thing I could call. What I did is I looked in the Python turtle docs reference. Uh, and so if you just Google Python turtle docs, you'll find this. And in here, it gives us a rundown of all of the different things that we can do with Python's turtles. So it gives us all the different methods, so forward, backward, etc., etc. Lots of different things in here. And it tells us all the various functions that we're able to use. So I just perused this and found the functions I needed. Now, uh, after we have the window set up, let's make a turtle. So I'm going to say John equals turtle dot capital T oops, for turtle. That's also a function, so I'm going to put brackets at the end of it. And if I give that a run, now what I see is that, okay, there's John. He looks like an arrow right now. So we can improve on that. Let's make him look like a actual turtle. So by looking at the Python docs, I know that I can call john.shape and pass in the string turtle. And if I do that, now I'm going to get, ah, so now John looks like a turtle. And if you recall, what we wanted was a blue turtle like that. So what I can do is also just say here, john.color and pass in blue. And if I do that, now we should have, great. So John is now a blue turtle on this light green background. So now we want to start getting uh, into the actual drawing. So we can move John around by simply calling something like John.forward and make him move forward, say, 180 pixels. If I do that, there we go. John shows up, and he moves forward 180 pixels. Uh, the problem is, obviously, I don't want all of that in my clock face. So here, I need him to move forward first without actually drawing anything. So what we can do is we can say, well, John, before you move, you're going to pick the pen up. So john.penup is a function, so brackets. And now he'll move forward 180. And he'll go like that. Beautiful. Now what I want him to do, put the pen down, move a little bit so that we can draw that little tick mark here. So let's do that. So john.pen down. And then john.forward. And let's just make him go forward, say, 30 pixels. And if we do that... Great, so we've got a little line there. Now, we want John to move forward a little bit here. So I need him to pick the pen up again. So John.penup, and then John.forward, and let's make him move forward, say, 40 pixels. See how that looks. OK, that's pretty good. Uh, the one thing I notice is that the size of the tick mark here, its width is quite a bit smaller than the one that we were looking at here. So if I want to improve that, I can go back up and sort of where I was setting up John in the first place here, I could say 
John dot pen size and let's make it say four in which case all right now it's much thicker uh, so that works out great now once we get them there what we want them to do really is come back to the start so if I just add up these values so 180 plus 30 is 210 plus 40 250 so what I should do is I should just be able to call John dot backward by 250 now if I run that John's gonna fly forward draw the thing and come back obviously we missed one important step here and that was we needed to leave like an impression of where John was there so to do that again just looking this up in the Python turtle docs I know that I can stamp John's current location all that does it just stamps a copy of the turtle shape onto the canvas so that means that if I run this now John has stamped himself there and then moved all the way back so great we've got one tick mark taken care of and believe it or not we're almost done the entire code all we have to do really is make this happen 12 times so that we get a tick mark at every spot so as we've talked about in class it should be no surprise that to make something happen 12 times if I'm using a, a loop that is going to happen a specific number of times that means I want to use a for loop because I know in advance how many times it should repeat so this will just be for make up your own variable name here doesn't matter I'm gonna go with tick mark so for some variable in range 12 and that just cr again creates a list for us with the number 0 up to 11 in the list which is 12 items uh, and it'll just repeat that that many times I can select all this code hit tab to indent it so now that parts gonna happen 12 times so if I run it right now it's not gonna do what I want it's gonna be a little bit dull he's just gonna 12 times draw right over top of himself which is not exactly what we want so the thing we've forgotten to do is actually turn him in between those so what I need to do is after John has moved back we just have to do one last thing and say John you should turn left by whatever 360 divided by 12 is so that I space out my 12 tick marks equally uh, and if I give that a run now there we go wonderful so now we've got a nice little clock face just like the one that we saw before